doing? I'm doing great. My name is Kevin. Hey, Barry. We're here with Barry Moody. Kemp. Kemp. I, I got tired of being Moody. Okay. Barry <laughs> Kemp. Yeah, I didn't want okay. to be Barry Moody. Isn't that, it kind of gives you a, you know, it's like, <laughs> is she Moody? Yeah, you know. Kemp. Are you Moody? <laughs> nope. I have to ask. Nope. Okay. You've been through a lot this year. So well, the last five Moody. years. Yeah, you, I mean, you know. Been through me- a lot for the last 15 years, if you want to be technical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, I mean, I've seen what you've been through. You know, I've kind of looked at it, and uh, I mean, I've written a couple letters about it. I enjoyed writing that last one, though. The last little letter I wrote, it was it was interesting. Um, let's talk about the positivity of of through crazy. You wind up, you know, with 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 positive too. Every now and then. We're going to talk about the history of Artmosphere, um, the past, present, and the now and the f- future. The present and the now kind of are two different things. Yes. <laughs> People say present, I'm like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that means. Yeah. But no, um, tell us where it started and when it started. What made you want to make Artmosphere? So, um, ironically... After 15 years of what we've gone through with all of the government right. and the politics and the permitting and um, all of those things. So, so ironically, 15 years ago, all I knew was that I wanted a little spot of my own and I was going to kind of, in my mind, duck out of society mm-hmm. <laughs> and just run my little business, you know, as if I was going to be on a mountain somewhere and, you know, right. off the grid, ha ha. Um, So, you know, I'd done corporate work, and I just wanted to work for myself, and I just wanted a place that was friendly and peaceful Mm -hmm. and loving and entertaining and... All the best of intentions. Yes. Okay. (laughs) But you had these ideas, I mean, because the place has changed so much in time. You know, and and to me, it's interesting, because, like, when it first opened, I mean, it was... was it was it was a place to go listen to music, you know. It was another place to go listen to music. To me, Louisiana is you can't. I mean, to me, I, I'm amazed ch- churches don't sell alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, si- I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm just being honest. Communion. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> lots of it. <laughs> they just don't sell it, the, right. you know. The, right. But they have wine. Right. So I mean, it's, or some of them do. You know, don't get yeah. mad at me. Yeah. And if you <laughs> need to, just email me. But, uh, but uh, I mean, seriously, you know, like, it's true. I mean, you can't go anywhere in Louisiana. I I don't know if I've ever been to a place in Louisiana that doesn't, ha- it's not the widespread push of alcohol. Yeah, I mean. It's what we do here. Where, where else do you live yeah. that you go to the movie theater and alcohol's available? And yeah. You go well, Europe is like that, and, too. You know, so, just yeah. I mean, to me, like. Part of our culture. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, I think. You you grow up a little bit. You, you learn more faster in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. I, I guess you could say that, you know, because I've had people come here and they go, "Man, did they just do this?" Uh, daiquiris is another one that we get mm-hmm. all the time. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh, did you just uh, like drive through it by a daiquiri? <laughs> you know, like people see that and, yeah. and, and they don't know what to do. Or, you know? or walking the streets with a drink in but, your hand. <laughs> but when was that? I mean, how long ago was that? It was fifteen years ago, two thousand three. Okay. okay. And in dog years, that's a lot. Like, what? I mean, so basically, you bought the house. You, you apparently bought the house. Yeah, it was an old house. Okay. Um, if y'all, I don't know who all remembers, um, but it used to be Lee's Oriental Grocery, but it had been empty for a long time. Okay. And um, it was it was very run down. Um, you could barely see it for all the shrubbery, and you know yeah. the siding was in bad shape, and the roof was caving in, and there was no central air, and all the electricity was the old knob and tube and Mm -hmm. um i mean it was it was pretty severe it uh it might have been better to demolish it and start over i don't know but yeah it grew itself you know you start somewhere and you clean it up and give it a little scrub and that's kind of how it began right and it's push it's basically wood yeah so it's like but yeah at that point you know it's 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 i i guess it's achieved so many different changes and then you put the, the front deck on which changed quite a bit, you yeah. know. Um, it, it made it more of an outdoor eating area as well, and, and relaxing area. And yeah. then you have Mardi Gras that just happened to change the, uh-huh. the, the, 
the 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 way that it rolls, and it just so happened to be right in front of where Absolutely. you are. Absolutely, you can How see lucky on the can deck you get? Catch beans. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and and that's the thing. Like where, where I grew up in Homa, we had, Mardi Gras was a big big deal, mm-hmm. and everybody wanted to be on that Mardi Gras parade for, thing. You know, right, so right. if you have a bar that was there, mm-hmm. you just lucked out. You know? Yeah, I think it's kind of sad. Um, the last couple of years, our Mardi Gras has just not been what it was in the past. No. It just, it just looks like our Mardi Gras, it, you know, the government's cutting back on what they do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we do these things like the barriers in the streets. Yeah. And we put them up weeks in advance, and they sit there forever. And, you know, you can't cross. And right. I don't know. I, it's I like Vera Escobar. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Only that's forever. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Mardi Gras is a blast. The you know the parade passes mm-hmm. right there, and that was the first time we opened. Um, technically, before we officially did our grand opening, um, we did a little soft opening for Mardi Gras in two thousand three. Yeah. To to me, Mardi Gras continues to grow here because I've seen. I, I mean, to me, I grew up in Mardi Gras, mm-hmm. like in the in the home. It, it, when you're at home, it, like you real close to New Orleans. I was in New Orleans every weekend, so like literally, I would see Mardi Gras times seventy. And then I came here, and I was like, oh, man, it's a toned-down Mardi Gras. It's really yeah. interesting, uh-huh. you know? And then slowly but surely it started getting crazier. Yeah. And, um, and it's kind of getting broader. People yeah. are appreciating the outer areas. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have lost friends during Mardi Gras. Mm-hmm. That's how crazy our Mardi Gras would Yikes. get, yeah. you know? Um, I think the craziest thing I've ever seen at Mardi Gras is two potato guns on the front of a float. And they would shoot these T-shirts off the front of the float. Uh-huh. And that's... That, I'm giving you all ideas, Lafayette. That's why I'm <laughs> saying this story. Because I want to see it. I, I can't wait to see this in Lafayette. But this is what you don't do. They ran out of T-shirts. And they were drunk. <laughs> they started stuffing them with canned beer. Oh. It wasn't, and, so, and they were shooting the, can, the cans off out of the potato guns. They would shoot so far, they hit a transformer, and it blacked out the whole town. <laughs> so they, like, literally banned it for the year. Like, you couldn't have, like, certain beer. Like, I mean, it, it taught them a lesson that you don't do that. Don't do that. Shoot the T-shirts is one thing, but imagine. No, I can't imagine. Because I'm thinking I get afraid sometimes with just the beads flying at me. <laughs> It, in 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 Homer's Mardi Gras, when you grab there are these guys that grew up playing football from college, and probably with the pros, and they're on the, the float. Uh-huh. These guys would save like ten thousand dollars worth of throws a year, <laughs> and throw a football like forty five, fifty five yards uh-huh. down the down the parade route, <laughs> and they would hit people holding beer, and the beer would go flying, and it, it it's the most amazing sight you'll ever see. Yeah. I don't want to glorify it, but I got to tell you, I, it, it was interesting to go there and watch stuff like that quite a bit. Uh, it's not here yet. All. It's not here yet. But uh, it's it's getting closer, you know. I hope you're right, because I, I worry about our Mardi Gras. You know, yeah. They, they decreased the number of parades this last year. Number of yeah. days that we had parades. Yeah. Well, it, it, no. I wonder why. Probably because they've been the homeless Mardi Gras. And they're like, mm, man, we don't need this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, they, there's actually, um, you know, I, I see people running for little beads here mm-hmm. in Homa after a Mardi Gras parade. There it literally looks like the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, yeah. it's just a colorful sea of yeah. the, the, the bead brick road. Uh-huh. And, and people will not pick up one of them cheap beads. Uh-huh. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So the drainage in Homa, yeah. I'm amazed it's not as bad yeah. as it could be. You know, so, but no, I mean, it's, it, you know, I don't know. It's, to me, it's growing here well, from I'm seeing it crazier everywhere so. else yeah. and, and, and being here for so long that I think it could be a little better, you know, like it could be better everywhere, you know. So let's go into another verse of Artmosphere. So whenever you, okay, anything that you're doing now that you were doing that you you're just like we can't do this anymore <laughs> anything like that like you know because you still have art on the walls like things that it's restricted well no just like you know just things that people would want to see in art you know when people come to artmosphere mm-hmm. 
what is Artmosphere that for people that are from other countries like Switzerland? We have a lot of people that listen from Switzerland, Germany. Tell them what Artmosphere is, is because like you know, I know when you go in there, the first thing you envision is art. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's kind of like its own art piece, and you're in there and you see all this art on the wall, and people are selling stuff sometimes too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's definitely very funky. It's um, very different. Um non-traditional but it's also kind of a fusion of so many different things Mm -hmm. um we have a lot of local artists that have art on walls uh and we are in lafayette so sure there's a certain cajun influence to a lot of those pieces but there's also um just the fact that it's art and it's people and it's music and you know so there are just so many different influences and i like the fact that it isn't one strict genre yeah um you know, it's bright colors, it's, you know, all different kinds of mediums, the the lighting is very different, everything about the building has kind of grown its own. Um, I've just kind of sat by the side of it all and facilitated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you, you've, it's for 15 years, because I mean, at first it didn't have the deck in the front. Yeah, well, we know? did the deck almost immediately, but we did, I mean, things have changed very dramatically. I mean, you know, there were um, partial walls and, you know, um, just, you know, a lot of structural changes inside. Then we did add the big front patio and, you know, just a whole lot of things that, you know, landscaping and you name it. Um, People who come in and haven't seen the place in a long time are pretty shocked when they see how much it's changed because it just keeps growing itself. And um, my real hope is, even though the things that we recently went through were such a drain and such a financial drain, um, that we're finally through it all and we can move forward again. Yeah. Because when I look, I just see a whole bunch of things I'd like to do now, you know. Well, what, what would you like to do? Oh, my God. I would love to make bu- building renovations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we added the front patio, and it's not covered, and I'd love to be able to put a cover on the front patio. Um, I like to be outdoors. I know it's Louisiana. It gets hot out, but with a fan and whatever, I like the feeling of being able to go in and out. That's important to me. Um, so, you know, things like that, improve the bathrooms, enlarge them, yeah. repaint the whole building. I mean, it's 15 years old, and it's an old house. Yeah. You know, it needs some TLC, and we haven't been able to give it any. Yeah. It's been easily five years of struggle that we had to spend our money elsewhere. Um, so Has it been legal? Like money, like attorney stuff and attorney uh, fees? Well, okay, so thank God for Kate Evans, <laughs> uh-huh. um, who represented us legally for a while um, and helped us defend ourselves when we had to actually go to court with ATAC. Okay. But, but, yeah, um, I mean, all of the permittings had to be done repeatedly, and there's a cost associated with that. And um, I spent, I don't know, $60,000 buying food and giving it away yeah. um, in an effort to get our food sales high enough for us to stay open, which, of course, didn't work anyway. And then they said, oh, that was stupid because it wasn't going to work, and we wouldn't count it. And I'm like, well, I did what I could do to try and keep the place open. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's 60000 right there. And then just... Um, I miss the pizza. Oh. I do. And, but I do love the French toast. I, you I know, think, if I, I think... had money back when, because I remember the guy that was working with DDA, he was like, Nathan Norris, he was like, you know, someone downtown who would open a really good pizza place and do something <laughs> kind of like Pizza Artista does or, you know, one yeah. of those. and. But we, we couldn't afford to get big pizza ovens and the, all the venting and, and yeah. everything that required for that. Unless yeah, maybe it's I not, didn't, and, and, and then, if I had not spent the 60000 trying to stay open, maybe I could have. But, then when you, uh, when you do <laughs> afford it, they still want you to change something. Oh, well, absolutely. And, so and you know, I don't yeah. have to go through so much permitting. And I was kind of feeling like a little underdog, like maybe I wouldn't get the permitting for it anyway. So, yeah. uh, you know, you do what you can do when you do it. And uh, so... That, that time kind of came and went, but I do miss the pizzas that we did do. Yeah. Uh, and really, I love our burgers. I don't know if you've had the burger, but... I, and I eat burgers everywhere, and I have had it, yeah. but yeah. I got to tell you, French toast... Yeah. I don't really eat a lot of bread anymore, right. but I got to tell you, I like French toast. I yeah. think syrup is what gets me. <laughs> I hear you. Syrup really? and butter. 
I think you know you know what would be fun? You take a hamburger uh-huh. and you put it on like like Texas toast uh-huh. and you put syrup in it. Yum, 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 <laughs> I know yum, it yum. sounds crazy. Well but it kinda reminds me of the Voodoo hamburger we do. Yeah. You know, and you've got blueberry gastric yeah. and apple and on a hamburger, but it's delicious. But to me like, you know, either that or you eat the patty in mm-hmm. syrup and then you eat the toast. Yeah. <laughs> like you're making me hungry. Syrup is good. Like syrup is syrup fun. Is our Sir, you can have a party with syrup. You can have a, a, a you can have a, a syrup wrestling contest. I'm scared of your parties. <laughs> you just We're baby pools, baby pools, and syrup. You can do anything with that. Yikes! I don't even need to drink. No, just, <laughs> just syrup. Yeah, that's that's how we start uh, taking pictures in my life. Wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, is that a syrup party? We're never gonna see. It. Go get the camera. Uh, <laughs> Well, we're hopefully going to have a celebration at Artmosphere soon. Um, we're trying to decide okay. what date, like the 30th, we were looking at. And then we were looking at the 3rd. And then, you know, there's, of course, downtown is already having a big event on the 3rd. But very soon, um, and I'll think about you, and we'll think about syrup. <laughs> I just think it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? I, I mean, I, I just, I don't know. To me, so, I think the reason Waffle House does so well is because like they have the syrup on the table, uh-huh. and the people don't go. That's an extra fifteen cents. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like Slather that. Syrup yeah, they on let everything. you have syrup on anything you want. <laughs> just do it. Put syrup on green beans. Oof. <laughs> just do it. Don't even think uh, about it. P- get a taco. Put syrup <laughs> on the chicken. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. remember that. <laughs> and, and to me, it it could really be a party waiting to happen. I think it is. Syrup party. Somebody somewhere is waiting to have a syrup party. Syrup party. And if not before this, at least after it. Get the hula hoop. <laughs> hula hoop girl, though, needs to be involved somehow. Oh, Everyone's clearly. eating syrup. They have to watch the hula hoop girl. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> no. This is why I have no venue. Because <laughs> they're like, this guy's what? crazy. He's got syrup. <laughs> He's got people with, with a baby pool with a, with with a, a slide. Syrup. And they're sliding into Jello and syrup, <laughs> and the other side is just people doing weird stuff. We don't even know. Like what, that yeah. wasn't the weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not even close to weird. No. <laughs> okay, so our atmosphere is not quite that weird yet. <laughs> but I mean, like, where did, did just one day you popped up? Popped up in your head, like atmosphere. Mm, not at all. Because it, inter- um, it is an interesting name, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and actually, Kathy Richard um, came up with the name that has Taco Sisters. Yeah? Uh, everybody had been calling in the middle of the night, giving me names, and some of them were not so great. But the minute I heard Artmosphere, I'm like, that just totally fits. That just felt exactly yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool name. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The English, I, I do a lot of history research on the English language, and it's really whack. Yeah. The stuff that people don't realize about the language. Uh-huh. but. When you break that word down, it just makes you happy. Yeah. And I think that's what, what's cool about the name. And it was all-encompassing, and that was always the intention with our atmosphere, which is, which is one thing about our permitting that was also frustrating. It's like, well, I don't want to be a bar. Don't make me yeah. be a bar. I mean, one of the things that happened with this is we no longer can have anybody under 18. And I loved the fact that um, we could have a band play on a Sunday morning and their kids could yeah. come watch them play. I mean, the yeah. whole family could come out and have brunch and see dad play or mom play. Because um, I always felt like, a, a, in my vision, this was all encompassing. It was all the different arts, all the different pleasures of life. Yeah. Um, you know, music, food, you know, colorful environment. Uh, so. what, tell them what the pleasures of life really are, because I, I think a lot of people forgot. <laughs> well, just that. I think just enjoyment, just enjoyment of um, all the different senses. I mean, you know, that was kind of how it all started. Right. Uh, it started with, well, we're going to do art supplies because in my mind that was practical because nobody opens a bar or a restaurant because those things shut down every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it was being practical. Yeah. And we were going to do art supplies. But then it was like, well, if you're going to have art supplies, you should have the artwork hanging and enjoy that visually. And then if you're going to have artwork hanging, then you should have coffee. And if you're going to have coffee, you should have food. And if you're going to have coffee and food, you should have music. And if you're going to have coffee and food and music and artwork around, you should have alcohol. And if you're going to, you know, eventually you've 
kind of cover like I can be in one space and enjoy so many different things. Yeah. I mean, to me, one of the best nights I've ever seen in Atmosphere, personally, mm-hmm. was some of the Swamp Pop, but, but 50s DJ stuff. Uh-huh. I got to tell you, that that was one of the most hyped up nights I've ever seen in there. I, um, the 50s I, I sound have a really music. hard time picking one. Yeah. Um, and I can just say, uh, I didn't really grow up with <laughs> music. Like, my parents didn't even have the radio on, you know? Okay. But later in life, I love music and I gravitate to it. And we've had, I mean, I didn't even, all I knew was rock. I mean, I grew yeah. up a classic rocker, you know? So when we had funk we had jazz, and we had soul, and we had Cajun, traditional Cajun, and Zydeco, and Swamp right. Pop, and indie, um, I mean, blues. I mean, I remember old Big Daddy yeah. Harry Hippolyte playing his guitar behind his head, and Snarky Puppy getting a big groove on the floor where you feel like the whole floor is yeah. waving, and Soul Rebels, and just, you name it. It's yeah. just been um, such an adventure. To, really to, couldn't to me, one moment. Yeah, to me, I, I um, you know, you, you, you think of, okay, like, when you come here, you know, you have the Strip, and then you have these areas mm-hmm. of Lafayette, and a lot of people don't want to, like, they would, you know, they want to walk, or they want to mm-hmm. ride their bike or something, so, you know, dr- the, 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 the driving and drinking thing here has, mm-hmm. has definitely, to me, it's, a, it's, it's better than it's ever been. Yeah. I mean, th- there's a lot more people mindful, hey, don't do that. You and know. more options I yeah. mean, with Uber and right. Lyft and, yeah. um, and places where you can be in a neighborhood and go to your neighborhood bar and have a drink and right. walk home and not have to get in your car. Right. You know, one of the things that I thought was really neat, uh, one of my neighbors, uh, Bill Good, the attorney, mm-hmm. is a super great guy. He used to be my neighbor down the street. Oh, I love him. He's just wonderful. And he put in bike racks in his parking lot mm-hmm. for us to encourage people. You know, get on your bike, be healthy, do the world a favor, yeah. and, and be safer than, you know, everybody getting in a car and driving all the way across mm-hmm. town. I'm, I'm reminding myself of the place I should have never sold. Ah, uh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome it, place. It. No, it was such a great place. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 was an art, it was an art project for oh, me. Oh, cool. But no, he lived around the corner. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you're like, you know it's him because his license plate says G-O-O-D-E. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he's got I think he's got like a Nissan something. One of the little sports car Nissan things. Uh you know what? He's I'll a truck. I, I know he has a nice car, but I don't know what it is. Well, he's got a couple, but but no, I've yeah. I've never met him. But oh, I but he was so always nice. the only guy that I would I would go outside and hang out with this dude named Bill Clark all the time uh-huh. and he would tell me all these old school stories yeah. of of like people that everybody hears about and talking to bill and talking to a couple of other guys in town that are like you know over 65 and Mm -hmm. they've told me about a lot of the history made me realize that all these people that everyone is afraid of Mm -hmm. they're people too that you don't need to be afraid of (laughs) afraid of bill Uh uh-uh because i mean i just wouldn't know oh no like like people i I, I don't want to say the name oh no no just he just looks out for everyone. I, th- I don't think I don't think it's good to be afraid of anyone. I think you should be able to be, feel like you should just walk up to people and say, you know what, it, you know, if you got an, say, if you got something to say, say it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah, it's kind of like when they say, you know, uh, I don't need a bunch of security. If you don't like me, you know, I'd rather you let me know. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's 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 kind of that situation mm-hmm. to me, but. Yep. People in, in this area, they can be interesting when they drink, you know? <laughs> yes, indeed. But still, I've, I, it's like I said in my little letter when I wrote about your place. I said, you know, do you guys really have that many phone calls that go to Arbonsphere and from the police station? I said, because I've, I've never, I've only been in your place one time and I've seen a problem. And they handled it. The people there handle it. Right. Because they were like, we don't want that. Yeah, you know, it was you funny, know? the... the the week that I went through the actual court stuff and, and, you know, found out that I had to 
go through this permitting issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I had just gotten certificates congratulating us for a perfect record. Right. Because they go in and they do these things to try and get underage people to drink at your establishment to make sure you're on your toes. And, you know, we always pass those with flying colors, yeah. which I feel like I should knock on wood. Hopefully will continue to happen. But we have traditionally been very peaceful and had the yeah. police out very few times. The only the only issue we ever had over the life of Artmosphere was for um, many years, I did have to spend a lot of money on attorneys, um, even though I think they probably cut me a break, but it took a long time to fight um, noise complaints. We had some neighbors that did noise complaints. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know Julie Calzone, for one, um, bragged to somebody the other day that she complained over 100 times. And I'm thinking, Why? I don't know, because she couldn't have heard it. Um, so I mean, anyway, I, and I'm thinking I wouldn't brag about that. That wouldn't be because that just sounds almost OCD. But well, if, if you, to me, that's illegal. that's literally like almost illegal. Yeah, it felt like harassment. I felt like yeah, like you know, the band would start and I'd start looking over my shoulder like, oh, here come the police again, and they would get mad at me because of course they'd been out there so many times. But, well, I mean, you clearly. Know, you couldn't just not you can't stay hear up. your sound no, that anywhere you near anywhere. To, you you no. can't even hear it no more than where the um the uh, what is it called the uh, the office place. You can't even hear it that yeah, far. Right. Yeah. You General know? office. Yeah. I mean. Correct. Well, I mean, what is what do they do whenever Festival International takes place? <laughs> well, actually, one of the calls was during Mardi Gras. Uh huh. <laughs> And I thought, how in the world could anyone think they hear my music and it's Mardi Gras weekend and there's bands up and down everywhere and parades all over? Yeah. In fact, the, the officers who showed up, they were on, they, I was sitting on the deck, and they showed up and they looked embarrassed to be there. They said, well, we had a call. We've got to come in. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, they probably know. I, I think eventually they did. I think yeah. at first they didn't. And they I, would be very, am- very I, I, would be, I would be amazed to know how many police officers have to eat their food their mouth yeah because of stuff that they see that is just like you gotta be joking yeah it's, it's gotta be a tough job I, I'm i sure bet it is extremely tough that you're yeah. asked to enforce things that that are difficult for you yeah <laughs> i mean to me like um you know I, I i see a lot of stuff online all the time I, and i see the people you know i mean i i even do it like maybe once every quarter where I start at one side of downtown, and I, I take my camera, and I go to walk up the street, and I see what's happening, like, on certain days, mm-hmm. and I'll take pictures of certain things, right? And literally, like, recently, I have never been more panhandled in my life. So, like, yeah. literally, like, that, you know, you you are not in that 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 street. Yeah, fortunately, yeah. we're kind of on the fringe, and we do everything we can to discourage that. Yeah. For what that's worth, uh, but yeah. But to me, like that whole situation, mm-hmm. like I wouldn't want that in my city. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame because I, I remember I used to go downtown a little here and there, and you know it felt safe and it felt it felt good, and mm-hmm. then. It reached a point where I would think twice before I would park my car in front of somewhere, you know, and get yeah. out by myself. And yeah, and and, um, you, and you don't want to be like that. But I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. Look, yeah. I, I mean, I, I went to New Orleans Monday and Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Someone asked me for money once. Right. You know what I mean? And New Orleans has got a lot more problems than this right. little city. Right. Yeah. Okay. They yep. really do. Yep. Now I just see it, and it, you know, you when you can walk around New Orleans and feel safe. And you're walking down Lafayette, mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm waiting for this guy to ask me. Well, well, <laughs> like, hopefully, to me, that should be easily so taken I, care I, of. I'm, I really believe in my heart that these changes that have recently been made with, mm-hmm. quote, unquote, lifting the bar moratorium, I really believe, um, not just for selfish reasons for our atmosphere, but for downtown and for Lafayette, yeah. that building these businesses back up, getting these places that have been sitting vacant while everybody was in speculative mode with businesses in them and and just having people walk in the streets and vibrant is going to help a lot. I mean, I didn't want to get out of my car because, you know, there are two or three businesses around me that are all shut down and it's dark and it was creepy. Well, you never know. I mean, look, if you've ever been mugged, 
anywhere that you go yeah. is strange. Yeah. If you ever had to fight somebody physically in the street, yeah. that's, you know, because you don't know what the hell they're thinking. Yeah, you don't know where you it's going to go. I don't know how many times I've, I've st- I, we, I think we even had a city council meeting about that one time. Yeah. Uh, with there was a uh, there was a girl who who was who was raped yes, down there, and that. I remember that night, and and the woman stood very well up in the front. She says, "There's no reason for them to do that. Right. They know where they can go and get something to eat. Right. It's right around the corner, you right. know." And and that's the thing, like, so what is it? It's either drugs or alcohol. Yeah. And, you know, clearly they're lying if they're telling you there's, you know, I, I mean, clearly you're not going to go to Jefferson Street and, and constantly keep having the same car problems. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, one guy's like, you need well, to give look, me $5 because it's my right. birthday. I went, I'll tell you what, yeah, good you know, good. like, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's just... It gets more and more creative as as the yeah. years go by. One guy though, he just smiles at you, Ooh, <laughs> and, and it's so weird because it's like, okay, like it's at the point where if you don't ask, I might even consider it. So, but but no, I'm and I'm not being a. I don't want to be an ass, and, no, you know. It does but feel, you know, I'm sure yeah. people are like, well, aren't you compassionate? As you said, it's, and it's, but it's not about that. Blah, 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 blah. But the truth is, every single time that you go to a place. Yeah. It's it's every time, yeah. you know. It's kind of like when you go to your house and you got to pick up the same plastic and, paper and it's not on the front yard. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I used to be pretty naive. I'm still kind of naive. Mm. And you know, I, we all are. My employees <laughs> would do things like you know get, make change for the homeless when they would come in. And, yeah. You know, and I'm like, please don't do that. I mean, I hate to be horrible, but you know, it, we don't need them coming in and harassing people, and that's what it's going to amount to. And I remember, you know, one time this guy comes in, and, you know, he'd come, come in before, and I told him, you know, don't bring him in, don't give him water, don't make change for him, and whatever. Um, and he had actually gone in, stole the money out of their tip jar, and stuffed bottles down his pants while they weren't looking. Wow. <laughs> That's... And I walked in and caught him, and, you know, as if I don't see, there's, like, little spouts coming out of the top of his pants. Yeah, that's... Little four spouts. It, 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 and and it, it usually turns into a negative situation. Yeah, I mean, sadly, um, it does. I mean, it's negative when it walks in the door, because already yeah. there are some issues in his life that he's bringing in with him. It's true. Or he wouldn't be coming in. Well, no, I mean... Looking for that. Yeah, I mean, and if it's not that, you know, it's like, you know... Um, the big thing that I see every, you know, I mean, and uh, I'm, people are going to hate me after this one, but like literally me, cause men, I'm sounding very compassionate. <laughs> men, when women are having fun, mm-hmm. they just feel like they are super, they got, they got to push the envelope and try to just get in them draws. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, they're having fun. Leave them alone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And clearly you, you, you know, like everywhere you go, you got to do this. It just It's just like, no, man. Like, you know, See, I, think that's I don't think people want to, if people say leave me alone and you keep on, it's, it. it's, it's, it's stop. It's a problem. Yeah, I think, you know, honestly, in, in my mind, um, people ask me, well, you know, what have you done that y'all don't have all of these problems that you haven't had to call the police over and over and whatever? And they know, they know it's not going to happen. Yeah. And, and, the, yeah. and the thing is, when people are going to Artmosphere, um, they're going for, um, positive reasons. They're not going to pick someone up. They're going yeah. to listen to music. They're going to enjoy the food. They're going to enjoy friends. They're going to. So I think that that in and of itself um, helps to create the atmosphere that there isn't that expectation. Yeah. You know, people really are just going out and partying and letting their hair down and having fun, and it's not a pickup. Yeah. Um, They're there. They're there to listen to the music. They're there to they're have the fun. Music. They're there to eat some Enjoy French the toast. <laughs> you know, take a dip in the syrup. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm telling you, if you did syrup no. dips, oh, it would be Lord. orange. Between marinara and syrup, I don't know which place. I, I, it would be so difficult. I'd have to get both. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have to do some syrup popcorn for you when you come. Oh or my something. God, no! <laughs> We're starting I, to do a movie night I, on Mondays. I'm French toast sticks. Popcorn. Oh, Lord. Oh, yes. You get a pizza cutter, you cut the toast, oh. and then you serve it with the syrup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, so hopefully hopefully that's where downtown's headed. Hopefully it will be happy land like that. Nice and sweet and I, filled I, with people that, yeah, you know, I, a softer side. It needs it. Lafayette needs it and deserves it. And I feel like downtown was held hostage yeah. for 15 years. And, they've, they, you know, they've gotten... 
I mean, you know, it, it can't be easy to work downtown and you hear the negative, something negative. Right. You know what I mean? Like as, on TV or the, you know, KTC dropping something or, right. you know, it, it, it's got to be difficult for anybody that owns a business yeah. anywhere for that to keep happening. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, but why would you not make arrangements to make it better? Exactly. I mean, so if you look 15 years back, that's when they were just doing Streetscape. They had just finished Streetscape downtown. I've never even heard of that. Well, that's when they, if you remember what downtown looked like before, there were none of the Cypress and none of the Azaleas and the okay. street, you know. So they did this thing. They so, called it I know, but plants they, don't make people cra- not crazy. Well, no, I'm saying they, they dumped okay. a lot of money yeah. in saying we're going to, we, they developed the Downtown Development Authority and all these. Mm-hmm. So they gave a lot of financial support to let's revitalize our downtown. Um, but then as soon as it started to work, rather than policing it and, and, and hurting it into what you want, they just pulled everything back. So they spent all this money just to um, Make- handicap it. Like, so if I were going to open mm-hmm. a business anywhere today of five years ago, right. whatever, um, most places will give you incentive because they want your business. Right. And you know, you can get a, you know, you've restored the building, you can get a break, or you have a certain amount of tax you're going to break in, they, you know, they help you with something on the the area, I don't know, just their, their incentives. Some, something that will help you continue to put money back into a yeah. reason to put in your business, Correct. instead of, and instead, we've right. done the opposite, I mean, anywhere else I would have had my business, not only would I have not spent all of my money and all of the effort, and all of the hassles, and all of the fights, you would have had people holding your hand and helping you. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's that's what more progressive areas are doing. And so hopefully we've learned that lesson and we're going to start doing that. Um, you know, it, it, Who does it start with? You know, sadly, where does it begin? Where does it begin? Because we vote people in office. Yeah, I mean, to me, to to me, I I think that you know the problem we have is there's no direction. Yeah. You know, I know that. I know we have a mayor now that's kind of he likes to get on social media and talk, and you know he's got his own social media pages and Mm -hmm. stuff too. But I I see things take place, and you know it's kind of like the same twenty five people show up. Truly. And that's you know? what I was just going to say. I mean, and, 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 the, the average citizen has no idea what's really going on. And yeah. I, I didn't know until I just had to sit through all those meetings forever. I mean, you know, I'm sitting in a meeting listening to an, an entire neighborhood beg that they don't cement this lot because it's going to cause all of their homes to flood. And because, you know, the council votes, uh, they don't vote in favor for the neighborhood. They vote in favor for the one business that wanted that one lot and um it's very deflating to see that the general public doesn't know politically what's going on and they don't because they don't they just look the other way and it continues so the few people in power can afford to take the time to yeah. to take care of their little nest egg whereas the general public's working so hard i think that they don't have time to to look out for themselves. Let me ask. Just my take. Yeah. On it. Wait, yeah. Okay. I mean. I mean. To me. I. I mean. It is interesting. You know. It's kind of like. Okay. You have a whole city. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. To me, this. We, we were really talking about some interesting it's stuff. Kind of deep. Um. Okay. <laughs> you have a whole city because I observe a lot of stuff in this city mm-hmm. and I see a lot of problems mm-hmm. that really could easily be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and it makes you wonder what's going on because, and I'm not being speculative, speculative at all. I mean, I literally can write down five things that if I, if I would literally have to take your hand and go, do you see that? What do you think's going on right there? Right. You know? Um, and, and I see it. I mean, and I'm just like, okay, cool. But you have a whole city. Okay. Apparently, everybody just takes care of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. Okay. Okay, let me give you an example. The Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Business Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. First, it was a Lafayette Chamber of Commerce. Right. Then it became, became Acadiana, one Acadiana. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. The answer to that question mm-hmm. is why. We have problems here. So why? Because of the fact that, you know, they came, became one Acadiana because basically the same business owners in Lafayette kept getting tired of the same old bullshit. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to keep putting their money into the chamber. That's what I saw. You know, it's like you keep telling us you're going to do something, do it. Right. Don't just keep telling us you're going to do something. You know what I mean? Like, to me, there's really no reviving of anything, you know. Um, I think for a second, I mean, if I ever showed up to a meeting and started speaking out, people would hate me. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat you to go talk about what lunch I I had with you next week. I don't really want to go to lunch. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I want to work in my office. I want to do some right. work on, with, help people with shit. I'm not about going, put my, you know, it's yeah. about other people. It's not me. So mm-hmm. it's, to me, it's like the safety of people should be your top con- concern, mm-hmm. period. And if you own a bar, you should be worried about the safety of people there, if they're drinking there, you right. know. Because they, they tell them that whenever, okay, when you own a, in a bar and you have security, if a bright breaks out outside, call the police. Okay? The people inside, they're not supposed to come outside mm-hmm. that work there. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, that's pretty much what they tell them. Mm-hmm. So if one breaks out and something happens in a parking lot and they call the police, that's when they show up, you know? So to me, it's very weird that every other bar and everything that can just exist without issues and headlines in a newspaper, except one, not even a mile, street. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. One mile, not even, how long is Jefferson Street? <laughs> well, so... To uh, me, I, I, it's yeah. hard for me to understand that, because, yeah. you know, if you were in a drone, uh, visualize that the fact that you were, might be in a drone, <laughs> and you're watching the street. Yeah, but you don't think there are other areas that are having the same... No! Levels, like, the, you know, they're doing things now on Simcoe, and they did things on the Strip, and that, you know, there are, I'm sure, areas I, that I've ne- well, well, okay, maybe it's a conspiracy, you could, but I don't see tons don't see of people calls. getting shot down yeah. anywhere other right. than that place. Yeah. Or, or those areas. Yeah. To me, I would want to figure out a way to be more secure. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that downtown tends to, at, at, up to this point. And don't say we don't have money, because, I mean, clearly there's money for yeah, something. I, no, I think that it's been very reactive rather than proactive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that other areas of town have um, started to more intentionally yeah. grow, where they have a plan. And they put I think it starts with a plan, and yeah, I, I don't know what our plan is. Yeah. If we have one, why not like let people know about it other right. than just the daily advertiser? Right. To me. Yeah. You know, because I think the reviving of security is what people want. Yeah. I mean, I know over the years, cause yeah. Now that I've been subjected to all of this and, and you know exposed to it, um, I think there were a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas. But they went nowhere. I mean, people are so resistant to change. Yeah. And, you know, do what you've always done, get what you've always gotten. And if at the point where you did make a change, it was a negative change and things are spiraling down, well, if you do nothing, it continues to spiral. Yeah. And, and I think there have been a lot of positive ideas. And what I would see is that if there is an idea, then they have a meeting and a meeting and a meeting and a meeting and a meeting. And, a meeting and nothing it, it doesn't move forward everyone's afraid yeah. to to make that step and actually take an action yeah um i mean i think you know to, excuse me <laughs> but no i okay like like you know i i see a lot of a couple a couple of things in this town that i've never seen only until the last two years okay. which are, i'm not going to say what they are okay. i want people to go observe <laughs> this in your city yeah, and it, it's but not it's not homelessness either. It's not yeah. It, yeah. you know that th- that that will always be a problem because if somebody a doesn't gap want of awareness. yeah if, does, if nobody wants to be responsible, you're gonna have that. I mean, I hate to say yeah. I work downtown clearly, yeah. but we are on the fringe, and I'm old. I, I you know I got old somewhere mm-hmm. in the last fifteen years, and I don't go out <laughs> very much anymore. 
So you're not me, that old, first I'm of all. Pretty old. But so for me personally, when I had gone downtown um, five years ago or whatever, I was like, oh. And then you know, yeah. since then, it's like, oh, well, things changed since I was down here last. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, if ACA wasn't there, I don't know what they would do. Right. You know, and parking is definitely. Yeah, an and, interesting and, and I'm concept. Very, I'm very concerned what my parking is going to end up being with the new Rock and Bowl. Because yeah. obviously, even though they have plans for parking, people are going to take the. What's well, a five-story building? They're going to need to park yeah, somewhere. Yeah, and they're going to park yeah. in the first, the nearest spots first. So where's that going to leave our people? Because yeah. you know that's kind yeah. of where we've been parking. But but I'm excited. Yeah. that we have them coming. Well, and and, um, and, and everyone I think is. I, I, oh, I think that everyone is excited. Counting I, on that and, 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 and hopefully it'll yeah. be what we hope it is. Yeah. My whole my you know my message to Acadiana in general always is stop writing about what's new. Yeah. Yeah, because like literally what built this place is not what's new. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, we it's great to talk about new things, but it's always great to talk about the people you should respect that built it from the yeah. ground up. Because you know, as as new foundations get laid, mm -hmm. you know, you it eventually it, it becomes a new problem if you still are having the same old issues. Right. You know what I mean? It's true. I mean, yeah. you know, motivation is a big deal. That's why I always talk about like, you know, what do you what do you, when you wake up? What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing today? Like, right. do you even plan that, or you right. you just don't even think about it? You just right. do whatever. So it's. To me, that's that's a thing, you know. But it's amazing to me that when you map, like when they do these city wide map area mm -hmm. charts, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you point pinpoint the problems of the area. I mean, have anybody done that? Has anybody done really done that? So interestingly, <laughs> so even even things like so we just made these new right. laws, okay? So we just made new laws for permitting, right? And not just that, but but several things, and um, and you know my thought was, okay, well, if you're going to expect that every business let you know if they're too close to a church or school, because that's one of the conditions, mm -hmm. um, shouldn't you provide them with information on the distance they are from the churches and schools? Because if someone would have asked me 15 years ago, are you too close to Episcopal? I'd have said no way. They're down the street and around the corner. And, yeah. You know, I wouldn't have thought of that as being too close. If just subjective. And they weren't even an issue, me. were they? I mean, that, that wasn't even an issue. Um, well, yeah, it turned out to be in the long okay. run because, um, and, and, and another thing that happens is, you know, the churches, the schools, the parks, all of yeah. these things buy more and more property. And it goes from the property line, not the building itself. So, yeah. so anyway, but there is no such source. There is not a central map with the businesses on it that you could go and just know everyone's zones and what they're near and whatever. And we're doing it case by case basis. I mean, just to, trusting that people will just know. Yeah, I mean, to me, so to with all the websites the I've plan, seen come up in the last fifteen yeah, years, I mean, with that, be an app, and you got to yeah. be able to just—it just seems like you would have a map. And you would have mapped out your area, and you'd map out yeah. your downtown, and you'd know who the players are and how yeah. they interact. Um, but but we haven't done that. Yeah. Well, they, they probably need to come out with a Louisiana grant for this area, because that's the only time I see them ever doing anything. Do a lot of, yeah. <laughs> yep. I was like, oh, look, Freetown just got a, what blah, blah, blah. Cause yeah. they, you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> but no, I mean, but no, I'm right. serious. Like, no, you know, really. like, I mean, I, I come from a place where, you know what, like you look at community and the community goes, hey, I've been in places in Karen Crow, the family, there was a family that needed help. And like people said, you know what, we're going to have a family community day mm -hmm. and we're going to help this family. Right. I don't see that in Lafayette. Yeah. I see it outside of Lafayette. Now you want, now you know why one Acadiana became one Acadiana because they wanted branch out because that's where people give a shit. Yeah. So to me, I'm not saying that people in Lavia don't, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that there's a lot more involvement with the community. And I think somewhere along the lines, if you want to build Lafayette into a secure network, you probably need to find more people involved in the community. Yeah. I mean, you, you Cause think that's, that to me, that's a big rule, deal. We, we definitely yeah. um, only have, I'm sure 20% of the people who participate. Yeah, and the same 28 people show up, and the majority of them are getting credit for something. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I mean, <laughs> to me, it's it's not it's not at all a community. Mm -hmm. It's not. Yeah. But you go to a like I mean I'm a, I go to a Youngsville chamber meeting. Mm -hmm. 
You just swore those people. I mean, somebody broke their car. So everybody's going to fix that car. Right. You know, the same thing happens in Broussard. I mean, right. New Iberia, you see a street march really? in New Iberia. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, I've, yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it just with the these clubs. Well, you know, I think, I, I don't know. You have people that will show up but, and want to donate to a place yeah. and say, I don't want to go into this one. I want to yeah. go into this one because right. it's in my Cause city. that's what I believe in. Yes. Well, hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, Lafayette will begin to feel that way. And, and look, I, I don't know. What, what do we do to encourage that? I don't know. I think that basically, think making some changes. You show people a video of what's really going on in the city, not what it could be in the future. What's really going Saying on? To me, that just almost. I, I think you need you both. Know? I think you, you need. need well, and, and, and maybe you, you do. You the carrot while you hold the stick. Give people a reason <laughs> to want to get involved. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think you, you know, if we've got a panhandling problem, you know what? Let's go out there and give them a dollar and say, yeah. you know what? We will be happy to give you another one if you show up here. Right. You know, and be a part of the community. Because, you know what? You want to change people? Give them a reason to change. Yeah. You know, because the same guy keeps doing the same thing over and over again. Eventually, he he's, he's going to get fed up. Yeah. Well, at this point, it's working for yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can think of one specific individual that would come by... Um, atmosphere, mm-hmm. and you know, at first it was like, oh, isn't he cute? Isn't that funny? Because mm-hmm. you know, he'd be all colorful looking as part of the the, okay. the gig. And um, but the reality was, for me, I always felt a little uncomfortable. I was like, this is just always he's always looking for something. It's never anyway. So I, I see that person pretty often, and you know, it becomes more and more, you know, that that everybody indulges it. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't have a place to live. He doesn't have a job, and all he is well, it doing ends, it, usually is taking it ends, everyone's money. To me, it ends with 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 alcohol, or oh, or, or something There's else. Always an addiction yeah. or yeah, I mean, some it, it, dysfunction it, yeah. that it's feeding. I mean, even if it's mental illness, regardless of what. And it's I think feeding, a lot of people a dysfunction. It's feeding you. To me, the one thing I've learned about this area is that if, like, say if. Um, you make a, you know, if they said, okay, we're going to help this guy do this, mm-hmm. they will, they will jump in and be like, oh, I'll, I'll help with that, you know, right. but they don't, you know, it, it, it's just, it's, it never ends basically is what I'm saying, you know, like for the last, and it's only been the last like eight years, mm-hmm. you know, but slowly but surely it keeps, it keeps gradually getting more and more and more. And it's almost like, it's kind of like that family that doesn't ever want to deal with anything. You go to Christmas, and it's mm-hmm. like your Uncle George is a big asshole, mm-hmm. and like literally nobody wants to just say, George, you're an asshole. Yeah. Everybody looks the other way you know what I mean? It. That's why I don't have these issues with my family, because I will tell George he's an asshole. <laughs> so, it, right. it, it, you know, like, and I, and I go to places, and I'm like, nobody tells him he's an asshole? Yeah. Like, what yeah, does that mean? Look, you're talking to the girl who um, I, I, comes into my mind, it comes out of my mouth, and... Sure it's probably I try to, to yeah I mean <laughs> I usually I before I say anything I usually like to yeah. listen yeah you know yeah. unless somebody's physically getting hurt right. but, <laughs> but but no I mean like you know it, to me yeah. the observations I've seen in the last right. three years it doesn't surprise me so so what would you suggest that that the city do I think they need to start with a big map and they need to start documenting the last 24 months of what actually took place in a negative way and where and I think that when you look at that and you clearly start looking at the, the, the situation, and, you know, there's clearly something else, some other things going on. Because there's only three spectrums that I see that constantly always have problems every mm-hmm. single weekend. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't see, you know, you're going to have drinking and problems everywhere. But, I mean. Well, I mean, I know for a fact that there are things that happen that the enforcement isn't there. No, that's the problem. And, and you know, you can make a new law yeah. every day, but if every single time, instead of just enforcing the one you have, you make a new yeah. one, well, then you didn't solve anything. Well, I mean, you know, the, the enforcement is not there. Right. And I think that the, the other problem is, you know, you get lax on the fact that it, you know, it might not happen when they are there. And right. the second they leave, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of those weird situations. It's kind of like your Facebook page. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you'll have... Uh, 60 days where you, you like the owner goes to work every for 60 days nothing happens everything's perfect no right. problems online nothing the second he goes out of town mm-hmm. everybody 
you, yeah. you've got a hundred of them and nobody can take care of them in a, in a, in a responsible yeah. manner because they're not there. Yeah. And, and it's kind of one of those issues. I think that's really what I see. Uh, the other thing, like, like, like driving around with lights off in the city. I have seen more people drive with their lights off. Oh my God, it's amazing! It's amazing. I'm, I'm glad I live a sheltered <clears throat> life. Um, there's another one with littering. I could tell you right now, if this city needed money, littering yeah. and and just giving tickets with driving with the lights off. And look, I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I've really seen some police officers pulling people over for driving without lights. Well, I guess That's I got one on dangerous. my Facebook page. I made a video of it while I'm driving. Yeah. The guy has no lights on, and a cop got behind him and pulled him over. Well, I mean, it's very dangerous. You think? Yeah. We were standing on um, we were standing out there by um, another bar the other night, mm-hmm. and literally this guy's driving with no lights on, and lights. I, I was like, turn your lights on and just turn them on, you know. <laughs> so it's like you know, first you got texting with driving, then you don't have lights. <laughs> Come on, man! You know they're doing it. So uh, but no, um, I I really didn't want to get into a lot of this, but you know, I, I'm glad it's late. coming out. Really, it, it happens. It happens. <laughs> but no, I mean. I don't. I just hate when I hear somebody lost their life because yeah. they were going to a concert. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't stand that. Yeah. I can't. And you know, and 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 then there's some people. I guess they just don't care about that. You know, or they're so used to it that it that it doesn't bother them. Well, you know. Yeah. I mean, again, I mean, we said earlier, but you know, ironically, you know, we to have to deliver that try... information as a police officer oh, too. Lord, I mean. I you know, the people that are making the laws don't have to deliver that information. Right. Right. You know, that's that's the problem, so, too. So I lived in Savannah for a little while. Yeah. And, you know, when I lived there, and, and I, I thank God for that, because I think in a lot of ways I thought differently about things after that. Um, and one of the things, you know, it was very community where I was. I mm-hmm. was in the downtown district, the historic district, and I got on my bike. I almost never got in my car, and I could yeah. walk to the nearby bars and restaurants and shops and art markets and whatever. Right. Um, and I think that if Lafayette could work in that direction, it, it people take care of themselves better. And I, it, I can't believe it, they it can't. It's safer. Yeah, and I, it's, I, I mean everything. But you know, we were so afraid. Like, oh well, if you have alcohol sold in a neighborhood, how horrible. Well, I'm sorry, but what do you want everybody to do? Leave their neighborhood and get in their car and go across town? I mean, is it really that harmful if you have a little pub next door and it sells beer and burgers? And, no. You know, and you can walk there and you, you know, stop on your way home from work or whatever. I mean, um, you know. So hopefully that's the direction we're heading. Yeah, I mean. I would love to have a place downtown. I can't afford one. But Is it really that expensive? It is. And, and there are so few properties available. Yeah. I mean, Everybody's sitting in speculation mode. There's a yeah. handful of people who are property owners who are waiting to see, you know, something happen that their property value is going to go up really high, and they're sitting. And on that's properties. all they care about. Yeah. So you know. So you know, until, which they have the right until to. Until it's spread yeah. out a little more, and more people are able to own or rent or lease, and and we treat it more like a community. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I think. Like, if you look at a river ranch type area. And I don't even mean River Ranch, just whatever, you know, a development that's an intentional development. They decide what they want before they begin to build it. And with downtown, if we would take that same approach, which I think we're beginning to do, I think you'll see a lot of those things improve. Well, one of the things that I see is, okay, like I talk to a lot of people. I talk to various people in various places, and, and, and I always ask them. I'm like, I'll see them in the mall, and I'm like, you know, you don't go here no more. Why? And they'll tell me why. That's where I'm coming from. Yep. No, I hear the same thing. I, yeah, and, and, and I, I hear these things. It's not that I just want to be an ass and yeah. say what I'm, I'm saying. Sure. It's that I see oh, it. Yeah. I mean, I watched somebody go home the other day, and they, it was 3 o'clock in the morning, and they went home and, on Facebook telling about how they got mugged mm. on a street corner downtown. Yeah. And Yikes. If my daughter was downtown right. and she had to fight with a dude that has right. to, that, I mean, I'm telling you right now, I, I, you know, it doesn't, all it does is make more war. Yeah. It doesn't really make anything better. Right. You know? So, you know, to me, you know, if that's your job, then do your job. 
Well, but, you know, we have to have a plan. We have to have yeah. a plan for, and, and I know a lot of people have shared a lot of ideas. Yeah. So hopefully some of those will come I think talking fresh. about it will, will revive downtown. Yeah. Because they'll, they'll be like, hey, you know what? They really give a shit. Yeah. To me. And they're doing things. Yeah. To me, uh, not talking about it, you're going to have a lot more problems. Yeah. You know? To me. Do you remember when they had the the mayor did the walk through downtown thing and and he look, I, and look I'm gonna be honest with you he seems to give a shit yeah he really uh, and does I just remember I, I don't remember I was out of town I don't remember where why I couldn't go but I, I knew people who went and they said oh wow I was so surprised people were twerking in the middle of the street oh yeah stopping that's... their cars <laughs> and running you know and it was like wow they were just so blown away and um, yeah. And, and, but that's the first step, the awareness. You know, like you said, if you, if you know at least what's going wrong, you know what you got to fix. And I think there are a lot of ideas, and I think that, I think, hopefully, that it's about to shift. And I think the kind I, of I think you might be right about getting, that. I, I think it is. I yeah. think there are, are, are different players mm-hmm. um, affecting things. You know, there's there are new people on different boards and committees and councils and whatever that are maybe a little more progressive who want to see some changes. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully with everybody bringing attention to it like you're doing today, um, it'll get addressed and not just yeah, because I a lower priority. I want to. I would love to see really, you know, not just. One pizza place downtown get cool tons of response. I mean, to me, yeah. it, how cool would it be if you like could if just everyone, walk down yeah, Jefferson walk down Jefferson Street and be like, "Wow, this is an cool awesome place. place!" One after another, like you yeah. do in other areas. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying that for as long as anyone would listen. It's like, y'all, we could have places. It's not that we don't want more bars. We yeah. don't want bad bars. What we want is cool places where you can duck in and hear a musician. You can duck yeah. in over there and get a craft drink. You can duck in over here and look at some artwork. You know, go over there and get a pizza. Yeah. I mean, you know. I think they want to grow too fast sometimes, too, though. That's, that's a whole other thing. Well, I you think know? that happened originally before yeah. they shut it down completely. You know, there is a, a happy medium in the world. Yeah. And finding that balance isn't always easy. Yeah. I mean, you know, now you got buildings that are just sitting there. Oh, yeah. You know, nobody's yeah. doing anything with them. Yeah. I mean, and then you have so places coming in that are trying to do what, exactly what we're talking about. Right. And then you yeah. have... Um, a couple of places that it's like they can't do anything wrong. Yeah. You know, many well, people have found their didn't. place. They found their home, and that's great. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, you know, they still have to we, get there. We do know <laughs> that all of the places that were downtown yeah. that everyone complained about, all of those properties, they were grandfathered in. So they still have a bar license free yeah. and clear. I don't have a bar license free and clear. So I have I, a conditional bar license that yeah. anyone can, you know, at any given time I might be in jeopardy, but those people they've been rolling along. Still to this day? Correct. Everybody has this misperception. They are grandfathered in. They are still. So now we're saying if you want to open a new place, you have the ability to apply for this license. But it was not easy to go through that process and it's not going to be. But for the people who already have it, They've already got it. And so basically, if if, no if you want to start a business downtown, you still would do better to. Go you have to go through a, a council, correct? In order to a possibly want to do it, correct? And and hopefully it won't be very subjective. Hopefully there will be more objective criteria mm-hmm. and whatever, and it won't be like a popularity thing. And this coming from me, because I know people accuse me of, you know having worked around the system or have favoritism, far from it. It's been very, very difficult just to try to run a business. Um, and, then, and it's and difficult just, big there, time there in the last, just the last criteria. year and a half yeah, in general. There should, there should, uh, yeah, there should be some criteria, and it should be equally applied. Mm-hmm. And let's pray that that's what happens. Yeah. Because up to this point, it hasn't. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we need it. Yeah. Um, now let's talk I about some positive stuff. Let's do. Amen. Let's talk about some positive stuff. I'm a pretty stuff. positive person here. But no, I mean, to <laughs> me, like, it, 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 all in all, you know, like, it's not a war zone here. No. You know what I mean? It is no. a great place no, to live. To the people are awesome. Oh, I, um, I just think sometimes no. being too lily white is probably not going to bring happiness here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. You know? Because, yeah. you know, making all these movies and, and videos about, it's a beautiful place. Mm-hmm. 
You know, when people yeah, go time. to the, it's kind of like what I tell people all the time. I'm like, you know, don't make a club poster with a half naked female. Because all you're going to get is a bunch of horny dudes that show up <laughs> looking for that half-naked female. Right. And they're going to have a thought process that I'm looking for her. Right. And when they show up and she's not there, mm -hmm. they give the women that work for you right. hell. Right. And then she don't want to work there anymore. And then they don't go back because that chick on the poster's not there. Yeah. I say this all the time. People are going crazy. But you know I what? Know. Does mean, that make sense? What, what you put, the yeah. energy you put out in the world is a lot of the energy that Thank you, you. you build and create and a lot of what you receive. Yeah. And we all need to put out better energy. But does that make sense? Yes, definitely. Okay. I mean, like, that's, that's what you're putting out there. It's like crazy to me. Like, like you're like, advertising I'll, something you don't want. Yeah. Like, is this what you really want? Think no. about what you want before you promote it. Yeah. It, it, it may, it's really wild to me yeah. when I see that. I'm like... Clearly, I hope people know she's not going to be there. <laughs> I hope she's not there. Well, but they don't. They, but they don't take it literally, of course. No. But, the, but when you people start drinking, when people start thing. drinking, it yeah. gives them a visual. Yeah. And it's like, is that visual really what yeah. you you know? But again, it's you're just putting out the wrong energy. You're right. putting out the wrong message and the wrong energy. Right. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about something. Um. Okay. You still have a meat. Are you still going to continue to make food? Yes, I always wanted to have food. Okay. I love food. All right. Food. Do not get rid of them French food. toast. <laughs> I'm serious. Hopefully we won't get rid of French I, toast, but I can't guarantee you. I've Anything had people. I can tell you what my hours will be a year from now. I have people that go in. I'll go in there, and they're like, what do you want to drink? I'm like, I want French toast. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, we don't have that. I go, yes, you do. Okay, I'm going to make you a special shot that tastes like French toast. Oh, it no. It has like Nichello no. and. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, and it, there's another one that tastes like <laughs> cinnamon toast crunch. <laughs> if I'm gonna shoot something, I want Jägermeister. Done. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm we're cool with that. Definitely, definitely gonna have food. In fact, we um, just started doing barbecue on Sunday. Um, and, really? Oh yeah, these great big pork steaks and mac and, mac and cheese and rice dressing and green beans and. Coleslaw and just you know everything you can think of that's barbecue. We're going to be doing you know sausage, boudin, chicken. Uh, pretty excited about it. So we're we're not going to actually do which we do still have those items, but we're not going to do the champagne brunch anymore, which everybody and their brothers doing. Yeah. And instead, we're going to have um, just like you would do at your own house. I mean, what at my house, I don't have everybody over for champagne brunch. I have everybody over for Sunday barbecue. And we hang out on the deck, and we drink beer, and we eat barbecue. I never go home, so it's like... That's what we're going to do. Well, I guess my home atmosphere somehow ended up being kind of this little substitute home thing for me. No, so, I'm, just, I'm just being stupid. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, we just... it's This is only our second week, so we mm -hmm. hadn't really advertised it until now because we wanted to make sure we worked out all the kinks. Yeah. Um. But that's pretty cool. So we're doing some things like that. You know, we still have music on Sunday, so we have the bands, um, you know. And, and, of course, it includes alcohol. We're doing, you know, a bucket of beer, and it's five PBRs that are 16 ounce for uh, $7 or something. It's, like, super cheap. Yeah. So you can just go hang out. In a bottle? Music. No, they're cans. Okay. Go yeah, PBR out. in a bottle is so good. Really? I don't know why. I never even think of that. I don't I know why. I think of PBR in a can. I don't know why. I, it, I, don't, I, don't, I had it once, yeah. um, uh, and I, I couldn't forget it. All right. I'll have to think about that, too. But <laughs> I'm being serious. It's very strange, but yeah. it's true. Um, I, people, Sorry. I... But I am not. I am very different. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I get all the time. You're not, you're not like other people that I mean. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, we definitely I, I, are going to do food. I'm like Mark Zuckerberg. I'm, I'm from another planet. Oh. I just I just have a lot less money. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean? But, no, I'm, yeah. um, to me, you know, any place that plays music in Acadiana, I literally think that they should give you a credit. And, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Every place that plays music in, in Acadiana, they are not, it's not easy to, to constantly, you know, people that pay bands, it's not easy. No, it isn't. It's not. And, and, and I'm going to say that because we got, you know, we, we, we it's you know, not a big I really, band, really think that, in my opinion, 
the economy would not be half as good as what we have it here if it was not for music in this community. I agree. That's what I truly believe. I truly believe it. If we didn't have festivals that constantly revived the music, we would not have what we have here. It's not all about seafood and food. Right. It's not. And, and, And I see that on a regular basis because when you are drinking, people get bored a lot faster. You know, and they want to do something. Yeah, it's a focus. The fact that you're doing Positive something, focus. yeah. If they can find something to do, mm-hmm. you're going to have a better economy because people go out there and they do stuff. And I'm not going to say it's a it's a perfect world because it's not. You're going to have fights. You're going to have you're going to have things that take place. Just learn how to deal with it. Right. Fast. Get rid right. of the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because put up with it. yeah, it, it, and the thing yeah. is, you know, what I'm saying is. Our music, and, and I mean, the biggest I've ever tracked a, a, a weekend here, or a week, a full week, was about 68 places playing music one week in, the, yeah. in, in 22 parishes. Yeah. And people go, Nashville's where I need to go. <laughs> I'm like, there's, music all there's around nowhere you. near 68 <laughs> events going on in 22, par- in, in, yeah. in 22 counties in Nashville, so it's just Nashville. Yeah. You know, and you might have four places where they're doing singer-songwriter night. Yeah. So to me, like, we have way more musicians here. We, it, To me, if there wasn't a Louisiana with music involved, there would not be a lot of what the United States yeah. is. Um, I think that sometimes our Louisiana musicians need to get out more and go spread their music around and, 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 and show people what we are. And I think that's a problem that we have sometimes. But other than that, that's it. I think if we didn't have music here, or it would stop overnight, you would really find out how what this city's made out of because they would they would finally have to say it. Yeah. Well, and you know, we do have um, a, a rich history of music. We yeah. have a very diverse. You know, we have major music here. And sadly, for many years, there were only a few places that. A local musician could play locally. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, Artmosphere, I mean, no matter how hard times were, we always tried to support our musicians. Yeah. You know, there were a few other places like the Blue Moon. And, you know, but, there, but there were only a few, and, and thank God we, yeah. we lived and we survived. Um, and now it's almost like the opposite is true, where there are so many places, it's so saturated mm-hmm. that it's splitting the market and, and you don't even know where to go. Um, yeah. You know, I'm hoping that isn't going to cause hardship for clubs that end up shutting down because they're counting on more than it's going to bring in. Because there is not a lot of money in this. You're yeah. doing it no, because it, you love you it, really and sh- not because you're yeah. going to make money at it. And the same thing goes for just about every aspect of that business. Yeah. People that are on stage, trust me, they love what they're doing. Yeah. They like lo- some of them. You know. Basically, um, you're men- basically you don't realize this, but no matter what level you're in, you're mentoring people that are going to be the history of the economy of your city. Right. And if you do it properly, you're going to have a, a, a positive city. If you do it shitty, you're going to have a shitty city. Right. And I don't mean to be so blunt about it, but that's, that's really what we need here. Yeah. It really is what we need here because it's the facts. So um, you could take everything else out of it because, you know, if yeah. you're going to show them, hey, you know what, you need to deal with the venue owner like this and all mm-hmm. this, there's ways to handle just about every operation in every situation. Yeah. It's not always the same. But I think that, you know, when I look at a band and I go, well, how much did y'all get paid last night? And they go, well, we didn't get paid anything. Yeah. I go, like what? <laughs> you worked and, 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 and then I'm, I'm looking at other bands going, well, how much did y'all get paid? Well, we got paid, you know, yeah. this much. Right. And I'm like... Oh, interesting. This band needs to hang out with y'all for like two weeks to see how y'all operate. <laughs> you you know that? what I'm saying? Like, right. because this is our future economy. Yeah. Regardless of, of, of seafood, beef, because beef, I'm going to be honest with you, we sell more beef in Acadiana than seafood. They can say what they want. Right. I, I've tracked it. Right. <laughs> so, you. Um, you know, I mean, I, I'm, it, it's just what it is. It's almost like, you know, what they, what they want you to know is what they tell you. Right. What what's really going on behind the scenes? Right. They just don't want to tell you. Right. So it's you talk to a person that works at a restaurant. See, ask. I heard this guy, this crazy guy, talking about this. Is that true? <laughs> ask the guy who does commodities in the back of the restaurant to to right. tell you how much they they order. Right. They'll tell you the truth. Because there's too many. There's a lot of restaurant guys. You want you, you want change? Go ask them. 
<laughs> they'll tell you the truth in about five seconds. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's interesting, you know. You know, yeah. to me, it, 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 it is because it, that's how you implement change. Yeah, and, you know, I said I, I lived in, in Savannah for a while. Uh, it was a fabulous place. I loved it, mm-hmm. loved it, loved it. There was no music scene. That was really the biggest drawback. It was like, wow. And, you know, they had SCAD, and, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a very artsy area. But not like, I mean, you just don't realize till you leave here just how much we have to offer musically. It's huge. It's beautiful. It's I mean, huge. It's so diverse. It's so huge. Yep. And, um... Hopefully it continues. You know, hopefully mm-hmm. I, I think it is. You, you mentioned um, growing, growing your own future. We've been open 15 years now, which there were people who were coming to Artmosphere and they were 21, and it's been 15 years, so now they're 36. Yeah. And it's so interesting because they were just the little Artmospherians coming and listening to music, and now they're in those positions that are making those decisions. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they're the ones booking festivals or they're the ones booking downtowns. Yeah. um, It's pretty cool to watch that happen. I feel like we had a positive influence from Artmosphere in that way because it was a place where people could go and have that exposure that – there were not many. Yeah. Of. Well, I don't know many. I, look, I don't know many people today. If you ask them, you know, what, what made you get through the last 40 years? Mm-hmm. The majority of those people's top five, mm-hmm. music's going to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it's probably number one on everyone's list. Yeah. Because, you know, you always remember a song or mm-hmm. you remember a band, you know, um, but original music is definitely something that needs to happen. I mean, you can't keep playing 80 songs all day. Yeah, it's a little you know, exhausting. So, I mean, I'm such a, a snob about cover tunes versus original. I love to hear a cover tune that's been revived, that they've made their yeah. own, or that they've brought out of somewhere that maybe you wouldn't hear it again. But but really, I mean, are we going to just recycle everything in life over and over? Yeah. I mean, I watch TV and it's like, oh, they just made a new movie, but no, it's a remake. It's a remake. It's a yeah. remake. So it's exciting to me that we have the amount of original music that we do yeah. and that we have a songwriter's night. And we've started getting some new people at our songwriters night again. Yeah. Uh, love that. Yeah. Love I mean, th- there's one guy who goes to songwriters night and he's super good. He, and, and, uh, he took a break for a little while and started doing some woodworking and stuff. His name is Dustin. Yeah. No, but, but, but there's another one. I don't know why his name is escaping me right now. Really I good. I don't know. We have so many. I, yeah. You know, there's honestly, tons. I can give you a list. There's tons. That's why, yeah. you know, when the songwriter thing came through the other day, I was like, Maybe they'll come back faster than the, the, you know than, right. than than every uh so many years because when they realize that like there's that much pe- that's there's that many people here right. writing music right to me we far surpass Austin and in, in, in oh, uh, Nashville yeah I really do I mean look how many people in Nashville right now are from Acadiana yeah okay I mean seriously yeah why couldn't they stay in Acadiana mm-hmm. there's two reasons <laughs> yeah. The hype's not there, mm-hmm. and the support is not there. Wouldn't it be nice if we did both of those? I think we can do it. Yeah. I think we've already started to be there. Yeah. I think that the more people that got in a fight one night and they stopped going out or, or, or stopped experiencing Acadiana should should probably go, you know what, now that Uber's here, I maybe get an Uber and I'll go check out something cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a whole other experience now. Or, you know, the guy that got the DUI. You know, go experience, but don't drive home, dude. Yeah. You know, I mean, somebody, do it differently. yeah, do it differently in another way, but mm-hmm. c- continue to support what's happening here because we're at a turning point where I think that the little stupid problems that we have mm-hmm. can easily be fixed. Yeah. They really can. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean, I know I keep talking about the permitting, but yeah. I mean, clearly that's large in my mind. But well, I hear, when, we, when we have Michael do say, yeah. Come before the zoning and, and the council and say, I have traveled the world and I've played these huge venues and it's wonderful to be able to come home and play a local venue that's a quality sound. Right. You know, in support of atmosphere and, you know, asking the city, don't mm-hmm. shut them down. But sadly, hopefully in the future, we won't be asking, don't not shut places down. Yeah. Provide some support to them. So they can offer even more and give our local musicians 
an even better foundation. Yeah, I mean, and David, I mean, David Egan used to like oh, to go to Ar- he Artmosphere. He played Artmosphere. I loved David Egan. You know, Egan. and the thing about it is, is uh, look, this guy Artmosphere preached to years about how he didn't want the smoking in the bars. And, yes. you know, yes. I'm sure that his yes. voice was very hurt because, I mean, I got to tell you right now, yes. after his passing, yeah. nobody's smoking anymore. Right. It was very sad. I don't feel like Lafayette showed him the appreciation while he was living that he was owed. He was really good. And then when he passed away, all of a sudden everybody was on board. And it's like, well, you know, couldn't we support the people while they're here and living? That's what you I'm know? saying. Like, And a lot of this is coming from, you know, I've been working right. with. The, a lot of the the people, you know, like Alan Toussaint, and, and right. like you know, a lot of these this this sound that built what we are, mm-hmm. it built New Orleans, it built you know all these mm-hmm. different areas of what we are, and nobody's trying to take anybody's culture away by multi genre and stuff. Right, it's always going to be here. Right, but we had to keep giving people a reason to be here, yeah. and want to support stuff. Yeah. you know. Well, they asked. That's me, just the way I see when, it. When I left court, they asked me, well. You know, so what now? And, you know, what do you hope for? And what's the future? And, you know, the truth is, um, it's wonderful people. Who asked you that? The council? No, of course not. The media. (laughs) (laughs) Just as a little five second interview. Okay. Um, But, you know, and and the answer, which I really believe is, it's wonderful that people came to our defense, thank God, or we wouldn't be here today. I believe that firmly. You know, the government would not. That's where your community goes, comes into effect. The community is the only reason we're open. But the other half of that is, okay, so now we're open. Please continue to come out. I mean, if we have a band that is world-renowned and they're incredible and we're so excited to get them and we've got 20 people in the place, they're not going to come again. Yeah, you remember which one? uh, There's a guy, Silent Treatment is one of his songs. It's so funny. The guy from Something About Mary, Jonathan Richmond, came to your place about a year ago. Okay. No one... Yeah. really knew who he was right. and, now, and I, when i saw it i knew i had to put something out uh-huh. because i was like there's no like, one is gonna get who this is this and this guy's yeah. hilarious songwriter yeah. you know but yeah. and, and right now comedy's big here uh-huh. this you could have got your comedy and your music in one with that guy that guy was right. he's a trip yeah that was if no one knows who he is he is the actual guy that was singing and playing the guitar between the the movie scenes in something about mary that's the only thing they really know from a mainstream perspective. But, you know, to me, I never grew up in the mainstream. I wanted to find out what's going on underground on every level possible, uh-huh. you know. So I got fr- I made friends with all the guys that sc- scrubbed the floors and swept the floors uh-huh. and stuff because I would be like, hey, what's going on the in here? School. You know, what's yeah. really going on in here? Uh-huh. And, and I tell people this day, you want, you want the truth? Don't go ask the owner. Go ask who's, course, who's scrubbing his building because right. that person knows everything about that right. owner. Right. <laughs> so it's true. Yeah. And and there are so many times we'll have somebody come through that people don't know because they're not from here. Yeah. They're they're touring. And it's like, "Oh, man, people are missing this show." And you know, yeah. it just the the energy was so great and you know, so many of these bands are so professional. Oh, yeah. You know, they can have 20 people in the room and they're going to treat it like they've got a thousand, you know. Yeah. And I see them in huge venues with thousands and thousands of people and then they come to laugh yet and it's like Okay, Lafayette, please get out and show these people support yeah. and show them some Lafayette love so they come back. Yeah, I mean, and look, like Monday, Tuesday night, I went to New Orleans. I went to three venues to see what was just what was happening there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I was like, you know, you, you had a local scene, three local bands, missing notes like a, like a SOB. <laughs> and there was a packed crowd. Wow. Okay. They just, it was Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, yeah. school wasn't in. The place right. was packed. Right. Okay, bands were were were, were pretty good. You know, it, 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 you got to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. I almost wrote that online, but I didn't. But like, what I'm saying is, well, you know, you it happens. But yeah. you have to, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like they and say it's a weekday, and you, know, right. you got to play somewhere to get get going. Right, and that's the thing. Then Sporting. I went to another place, checked them out, mm-hmm. saw it was it was it was you know, and then you had a whole other place. That played somebody from Montreal, somebody local, and it kind of like the circuit of, you know, bring the local scene, let them see something new, and we have a touring musician mm-hmm. on uh, at the end. And it was kind of interesting because it's like a spin off of synth 80s 
original rock. Interesting. That's what's yeah. kind of getting big right now uh-huh, to me, uh-huh. you know, which is interesting. Um, yeah, the trends in music have yeah. been really fun to watch. Yeah, a lot of uh, keyboards are coming back. I mean, mm-hmm. you just swore that Kurzweil was out there <laughs> selling something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he might be. Yeah. <laughs> He's a trope. Like Ray Curl, you know who Ray Kurzweil is? No, I'm okay, he's sitting here laughing like. No, he's. I, I believe you. Ray Kurzweil is the guy who you know, created the, uh, certain parts of analog synth. Okay. And he's like really big into artificial intelligence and stuff, so he's 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 really out there, kind of like me. <laughs> I just you know once again, but no, you'd have to hear his story. Uh-huh. If you're bored one day, go check out a documentary about Ray about Kurzweil and. You you you, you will learn quite a notes. bit. You'll <laughs> learn quite a bit. He's he's a, he's an interesting guy to find out about. He damn sure is not. He, he wakes up every morning motivated to do something. I promise. Very cool. So, but no. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you just because the media did. All right. w- future. What is the future? For atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I see, I see what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, what do you. you see? I see, um, I see Barry that is, okay, finally we, we, I can, I can focus on my business, you know, and I think it's, I think it's shitty what they did. I think it's shitty that they, they, I'm saying this out loud because if you didn't, I mean, I, I could think of maybe two members, council members that have ever even stepped foot in your business to support it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, and I, and I'm going to say that and, and you know what? If somebody, um, you know, doesn't support something that the actual community supports, y'all should think about that. Yeah. Really. I mean, because uh, cause this town is not going to, it's, it's not going to make it on pizza. Right. And see, and see I, I'm telling, I'm sorry. It's just the truth. You know, yeah. we eat here. Yeah. Well, everybody wants to eat here. Right. But. We have other things here, you know. It's not, you know, it's kind of like what they say. We, we love Zydeco and we like Cajun music. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I, me eating a hamburger every day of my life, you know, mm-hmm. trust me. I, I get people, how do you do that? I've heard that every day of my life. Mm-hmm. How do you constantly think that you're not going to want to hear the same music every day? Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, to me, there's a place for atmosphere. We're, you know, to me, they sing in church. They play music in church. Mm-hmm. So, so why why are they giving you that much drama over a place that really, if you had all those dots on the map, there would be none there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it, to me, it doesn't make no sense. Yeah. Are they jealous because you have parking? You know, I've often wondered, like, you know, so how, did, how did I get to this point of, of such a huge defense? I don't understand it at all. I understand that you want to maybe, yeah. you know, keep keep it under control with some of the craziness that they were dealing with right. w- with some people that were you used to be here five or t- seven years ago. Or even longer. Yeah. yeah. But it's kind of under control, you know, and you don't want to have every place downtown that has that, that has a liquor license. But you know what? You, you, that, that's what people want in Louisiana. Right. If you go to a place they don't sell alcohol, mm-hmm. they won't make it a year. Yeah. Unless they're a daycare. Yeah. I mean, even, <laughs> even Pops Po' Boys. I mean, you're not going to go get a Po' Boy and not have a beer. People want to drink here, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. You're in the middle of a place that literally, if you there is no alcohol, you don't have a, a business. Yeah. I mean, when you have a fair and you can sell beer on the street, why can't you give it to a brick and mortar location? That doesn't yeah. even make sense to me. Yeah. Like Agreed. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> All right. No. Um but no y'all what are y'all doing right now? Like your Monday like are y'all open every day still? We are. Um, which was kind of funny because we were dictated that we have to be open five days a week and I'm thinking, Well we're doing seven. Why y'all been doing months? seven. I'm sitting on a building. Yeah, I've done yeah. seven. If we so we used to do literally a band every single night, seven days a week. Um, and we don't do that anymore. We do a band, an early show at 7 o'clock for those people like me who are older and I want to actually see music without having to stay up late. Yeah. So we do that on Thursday. We do bands on Friday night. We do bands on Saturday night. We do bands on Sunday morning slash afternoon. 
And on Monday, we have been kind of trying to decide what to do with that. And I think we're going to start doing a movie night. So if that's true, it'll be the only night we're not actually doing music. Um, although I suspect we'll end up with people jamming before and after. Um, and on Tuesday, we do a karaoke. But it's kind of funny because it's all these musicians who come out and do karaoke. <laughs> so it gives it a different twist. Which is not normal. Yeah. Because a lot of musicians are, like, scared of karaoke. Yeah, they won't go no, near it's it. it's pretty funny. We yeah. have true good musicians, like major vocalists and mm-hmm. all these things that come out and do karaoke. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. And then Wednesday is Songwriters Night. Um, and I love that. And I would call done it. And we've Songwriters Night since the day we open. Yeah. Songwriters Open Mic, because some of it's open mic and not songwriters. But it gives people a, a place to start. And, you know, we had bands that started with Arpasphere. Yeah. Um, you know, that came and played from day one, and, you know, now they're nationally touring. Yeah, and you you do have to kind of start somewhere, because, like, you know, it's kind of like they say, um, you know, uh, public speaking is a big fear for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you don't really walk up and do public speaking anywhere. Yeah. You know, you stand yeah. up in the middle of a restaurant and start talking about something, they want to arrest you. So, like, you know, I, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, you, you go to a place and you either talk or you, or you speak, and a lot of these people that are just playing guitar. They don't have a place to go and be in front of people. Mm-hmm. You know, you might be the best guitarist ever, but you can't perform in front of people. Right. So, you know, that's another thing, you know. And then that's one of the reasons I like to do guitar talk, because they're, they're in a room alone, and I'm putting them on the spot asking them a question. If you get to a point where you're bigger than that, trust me, it's going to show on camera. So doing right. it locally is a much better place for you to do it. Right, right. So, but the time that it entails, and it's not expense, it's not cheap yeah. having all these bands. Yeah. No, you know, a, that's a whole a, other thing. People don't realize, um, like, we don't make any money on the music, period. Yeah. Like, the door goes to the band when, when yeah. there's a door charge. And, you know, we incur the cost of booking it, promoting it. Right. The equipment, the stage, the building. The doorman, the wristbands. The, I mean, you know, I yeah. can go on. Like, we give discounts to the bands. and you know. So, um, for us, we're just happy to be able to be a home to these people and have them right. play and be able to enjoy the experience. Hopefully, we make enough money on food and alcohol to be able to stay open and continue on to the next day. I mean, that's really what we count on. Um, you know, we have employees that it supports. We have neighbors that it supports. I mean, as long as the business itself can continue to thrive, right? power to it. You know, that's the goal. And I think that's one of the problems in Lafayette. You know, we'll have a strong local presence of businesses, and then we'll have corporations come in and try and, like, open a restaurant, you know, a big Italian restaurant or a mm-hmm. big whatever, and they don't make it. And I think part of the problem is that in Lafayette, we're willing to do things for longer knowing that there's an end result that we're yeah. happy with because we don't have to make that immediate big cash. Yeah. You know, we're in it for our heart more than just for the investment. Yeah. And, and I see that happen a lot, at least in the restaurant industry. Um, obviously not so much in the music because that hadn't been an issue until now. And we'll see where that goes. Because, mm-hmm. you know, there are a lot of new players. There's almost everybody and their brothers now trying to have music. <laughs> and uh, some of it's good and a good thing, and some of it, I guess they just need a place to start. <laughs> yeah, well, some some of, I mean, you know, like you got to have some equipment. I I just see doing. I see the support needs to grow. Yeah, that's what I see. Yeah, um, you know, and, and and if if and if it if it doesn't, it's 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 gonna yeah, hurt our economy. Again. It's yeah. well, our con I, to me, our economy is thrived on music. Period. Right. I, I, food is there, but I'm telling you, it's it's music too. We, it's we, we, no matter what, you're going to eat. Yeah, huge part you of know? the community. Yeah, if you if you choose to go to a show, you're choosing to uh, benefit a local business. You're choosing to be a part of the community, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Same thing with a festival. Yeah. So, um, th- you know that that's that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. Agreed. You know, I could put that on a T-shirt and let people read it. There you go. Serious, because it's true. I mean, that's. You know, this year, I mean, in the last four years, you just wore T-shirts were like the best things since sliced bread. And, you know, so, but it's true. I mean, yeah. you know, benefit the community, benefit the benefit the local, uh, support you, local music. I mean, I, we hear this all the time and we see these p- things online all the time. But, uh, I mean, really, support what makes you happy. And if it makes you happy to go hear more live music, 
to get some kind of influence, go do that. Yes. If you're a musician and you want to start playing an instrument, go watch a musician. Yep. You know, be yeah. in there. You, you do a vote with every one of your actions. Ask them a question. How did you actually get to the point where you're playing? Things like that. Because mm -hmm. to me, that's where we need to keep passing it on. Yeah. You know, it's true. I mean, and we're not trying to be negative. That's not why we chose to come here today. Right. I mean, actually, um, we just wanted to talk about something. Yeah. And it kind of would happen, happen. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a very positive message. I think the fact that we we have so much music, we have new places, yeah. we have new laws, we have a lot of possibilities. We have, you know, I think that things are at a pivotal point. And hopefully people will learn from experience of the past and move forward and it'll be what we have. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I think I think it's headed there. Yeah. I do. Yeah, and I, I, I think I'm right. you know, to me, we 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 have an opportunity here, and and I, I think that if we're going to continue to grow, we have to think of security before we grow. Yeah, we we, we can't keep growing and, and expect people to just keep so, figuring it but out. But in my mind, yeah. security means um, probably different things than it might to you, and I think that's part yeah. of what doing the research on what happened where and why. And how to approach it is important. Yeah. Because each person's perception of what the security means yeah. is going to be different. Well, the, the, when I think of security, this is what I think about. Mm -hmm. I think of a, a female, if she can't feel at home to get out of her car and walk into a place two blocks away, mm -hmm. you've got a security problem. Yeah. Yeah. Period. And I'm not, I, that, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Period. And, I'm and not saying the, the world is a perfect right. place. I'm yeah. saying if you have a daughter and she can't walk two blocks from a place from a park, place she's paying five dollars to park yeah then you have a security problem in your city period yeah i think that's a great analogy yeah i guess that's i can't help but always um jump to the next step because when i hear of a problem i always think the solution <laughs> and we're all gonna have solutions i just don't know how we don't have a solution yeah yeah to me that i mean i think it's solutions plural yeah I, I like to figure out pro how to fix problems too, and and yeah. it's my nature. Yeah, <laughs> to me, women drive the community. They drive the business. They drive the everything that you could possibly imagine. You making you're making cool little fruity drinks, not because a group of dudes want to come in. Okay, <laughs> right. it's just how it is. I mean, right. women feel comfortable in your place. You're going to have a business. Right. That's how it is. Take that lesson. You know. Yeah. You know, the, women that complain all day about other businesses. You might want to consider maybe going, you know what, let's talk to these women who are building our economy. Right. Not complaining all day. Right. I'm going to end it with that. <laughs> <laughs> end it on that positive note. Great <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Thank uh, you I wish so you nothing much. but success in the future. And Thank seriously, you, you know, you, me and you have met, you've never been in any anywhere near any of this stuff that I do. But, like, yeah. literally, you probably thought, oh, my God, where am I going? A, boss, a, ba a basket? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I but know. but no, I mean, thank you for coming in. Thank you for taking the time to come thank in. Thank you, and, and um, I hope my message came across. I hope people hear the positive, hear the concerns in a way that are that's productive. Yeah. And, and I hope that for you, too. Yeah. Well, because I think this is an important, absolutely. an important service that our community needs. My message is simple. If we're the happiest place on town, make the people that live here happy, too. Yeah. Don't okay. keep telling everybody in the world that we're happy. Yeah. And make when they so come here, they so. yeah, we, we, we're happy for a reason. Let's keep it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good day. We'll end on a happy note. Thank absolutely. You. Thank you, everybody. Bye.